trilobites are perhaps the most iconic arthropod of the prehistoric world due to their grand diversity and abundance throughout the fossil record. Thriving for nearly 270 million years, they are certainly one of the greater success stories of prehistoric animals that have now perished. However, all these trilobites you have seen are incomplete. They are simply shells, just the exoskeletons of a much more complex anatomy, an anatomy exquisitely shown with pyrotized trilobites. Hello everyone, welcome to Paleostoric, and today we have a very rare, special, and unique fossil. It is truly one of a kind, the pyrotized trilobite. Now, this specimen is of the species Triarthrus etoni and originates from the Loran Shale in New York. It dates back to the late Ordovician, which is around here on the geologic timescale. That's around 450 million years ago. To give some perspective on size, let's talk about the dimensions. This trilobite is around 9 millimeters long and 5 millimeters wide. It is within a roughly 3.4 by 1.8 centimeter matrix of shale. The matrix itself is very thin, being 5 millimeters at its thickest and less than a millimeter at its thinnest. What makes pyrotized trilobites like this one so special is the presence of soft tissues rarely ever fossilized, specifically the fine detailed antenna, legs, and gills. To get a better idea of what I mean, let's take a closer look. Here, with this specimen, you can see the very fine, small, and thin antenna and legs. The pyrotization of soft tissues offers a very clear look into the 3D shape and the anatomy of these organisms that are not even seen with other rare soft tissue preservations. An example is this trilobite from the Burgess Shale, a very well-known deposit in Canada for the preservation of Cambrian fossils. As you can see, soft tissues like the legs and antenna can be seen as very faint films that are not as distinct as the gold luster produced by pyrite. Against the dark shale, the pyrotized features really pop to display a lifelike trilobite. Before we continue, let's take some time to appreciate the preservation of this specimen. For this type of fossilization to occur, the conditions had to be exactly right. When these trilobites died, they were buried quickly in deep water under anoxic or low oxygen environments. This prevented normal decomposition from occurring and allowed for bacterial action that facilitated the replacement of the soft tissues by pyrite. As seen before, 
Pyrotized trilobites like this one are found in very thin mudstone layers, which are typical of stormbed deposits. These layers are split open and observed for any trace of these trilobites. Around 90% of these trilobites range from 8 millimeters to 10 millimeters in length, making this one average sized. If visible from its dorsal or upper side like this one, it is evident there is a trilobite. However, if a range with its ventral or underside visible, it is much more difficult to detect there even is a trilobite, as it appears as a slight depression in the rock. A ventroside trilobite allows for a unique opportunity to explore the anatomy of trilobites further, with a better view of such structures as the gills. In fact, ventral trilobites have even led to the discovery of trilobite eggs and their means of reproduction. Preparation of these trilobites requires lots of time and precision. While looking under a microscope or other type of magnification technique, microabrasion is used to blast tiny particles at the specimen and remove the surrounding shale. If too much pressure is used, the specimen could get damaged with pyrite being removed. Around the world, there are only around half a dozen places where these pyrotized trilobites can be found. The most well known is the Beecher's Trilobite Bed in New York, which is near where this trilobite was found. A place like the Beecher's Trilobite Bed is considered a conservat lagerstante. This term literally means conservation storage place, but it is used to refer to a deposit known for exceptional or near-perfect preservation of fossils. The Beecher's trilobite bed was named after Charles Emerson Beecher, a paleontologist at Yale University who excavated and prepared trilobites from this area from 1893 to 1895 and conducted extensive studies on trilobite anatomy. With this deposit rediscovered in 1984 and new sites discovered, further studies continued on these amazing specimens, unlocking even more about the mystery of trilobites. Thank you all so much for watching, and please consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell to help support this channel. Happy fossils!